All right, guys, new year, new project here on the channel. So every year I like to do one really cool project with you guys during the winter time whenever I can't really get out on the water or I, I say I can't, I don't want to. I'm kind of a fair weather fisherman. And when it's freezing cold outside, I would much rather be in the shop building something cool with you guys. So every year I try to pick a good project during the winter time that we can do here and use it throughout the winter. Last year we built the really cool double jet ski trailer and then before that we built that really cool overland trailer or, or the camping kayak trailer where we could haul the kayaks and the rooftop tent. It was really cool stuff. I've got playlists on those builds. You can go find them on my channel. But this year I wanted to build something cool that I've had in mind for a long time. I just, I've been searching Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace to find the right starting point for my project. I was looking for a truck bed trailer, and as you can see, I found what I was looking for, but I didn't want just a regular, you know, new Chevy or, or new Ford bed. I wanted to find something kind of old, kind of retro looking, and I think I found it. This is a 1987 Mazda B2000 pickup truck bed. It's the six foot bed. Someone converted it a long time ago into a pull behind trailer, which is great. I don't have to do the conversion. My original plan was to find an old truck and do the conversion here on the trailer on the channel with you guys. But I looked up and found the bed that, you know, really fit all of my, it checked all the boxes. It really fit the needs that I wanted. I wanted it at least six foot long. I wanted it retro. I wanted an old metal bed. I didn't want one of these new plastic beds that, you know, you really couldn't work with a whole lot. And I wanted it to have some character to it. And I think this checked all, all those boxes, guys. These beds look really cool. They're really similar to the Tacoma, or they, they weren't Tacomas back then. They were just Toyota pickup trucks. But they're really very similar to the Toyota pickup trucks in the 80s. They were kind of, the Mazda and the Toyotas looked really similar back then. But I really like the, the way this thing looks, the retro style to it. I've already shared some pictures today. I got this today, and I shared some pictures on Instagram. And a lot of people are already saying, you gotta keep the graphics, you gotta keep it the way it looks. So we're gonna probably incorporate that. We're gonna keep these really cool graphics, but the colors may change. I do want this to match my truck when we're done, but the plans I have for this is I want a rooftop tent. I want a 270 awning, which we have all of this here. We just gotta make it work. And there's a few things that we gotta get for it that I wanna add, but I want this to be a really cool overland rig, but I also wanna try something, and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it or not, but. I want to put a bumper on this thing with a hitch. Uh, I'm talking, I want to get a really nice CBI, uh, you know, heavy duty bumper back here. Well, maybe a swing out spare tire on the back, but I want it to have a hitch back here because I'm thinking this is short enough that I could pull this trailer to the river and pull my kayak trailer behind this trailer. I, I know it sounds kind of crazy pulling two trailers, but I checked the laws here. I live in Alabama and it's perfectly legal as long as everything is lit up and it's not over a certain length. So we may be able to do that. I may be able to take this camping trailer and pull my kayaks behind it when we go to Gunnersville State Park for camping or up north camping on the river. And when we got there, I'd be able to set up camp on this trailer and still be able to pull my kayaks to the boat ramp on the kayak trailer. So this is gonna be a fun build. I was ready to start tearing this thing apart, to be honest with you. I didn't even plan on starting this video. Uh, I got it in the shop about two hours ago, and the first thing I started doing was grabbing tools and getting ready to strip this down, and I thought, well, I need to show you guys what it looks like before I do that, and then I can start mocking it up, because that's the main thing I wanna do is get my bed rack on here, get the tin on here, and kind of mock it up the way I can with the stuff that I already have, and then we'll go from there. We're gonna add solar panels, pull out refrigerator, water. I would even like to incorporate some sort of pop-out shower beside it, so I got big plans for this thing. So let me walk you guys around it really quick, show you what it looks like, and this video is just gonna kind of be an intro to what we're doing, the plans for it, because I want a lot of you guys to hit me up in the comments. You, My veterans that's been watching the channel and following my builds and helping me out for a long time, hit me up in the comments with any ideas you have. I'm gonna make a checklist here on the board, and as we build this, I wanna use your ideas and my ideas to see what we come up with, and then we're gonna take this thing up camping. So let me show you the truck real quick. I keep calling this a truck. It's actually just half a truck. It's a truck bed, but like I said, it's a 1987 Mazda B2000 pickup truck. Whoever did the conversion on it, I was kind of worried that when it got here that I was probably gonna have to cut all this off and redo it to be happy, but I checked everything over, and whoever did it did a really good job. So we're probably just gonna leave it like it is. I got plans to build a box up front up here for storage. I'm also debating on putting a diamond back on here 
and having the bed cover with the rooftop tent above it with the 270 awning. What's really cool is if, if I wanted to, this is a six lug pattern that matches my Toyota Tacoma. I could put matching wheels on this to match my truck if I wanted to. I don't know if I'm gonna go that route yet because it is a Mazda, it's not a Toyota bed. Although, you know, I could paint this thing and put Toyota on it if I wanted to, but uh, I kind of dig this retro look. So it's probably gonna end up staying this, this really cool Mazda design. It's got a bed liner in it. This side over here looks just as good. Minus a few little dings. Got a couple here and there, but nothing I don't think that I can't fix myself. The tailgate's got a little, little ding right here that I think we can take care of. The tailgate works. How cool would it be to open that up, have a fridge slide, Billy Bar's tail, tailgate cover right here to match my Tacoma. Rooftop tin on the top, water storage. I even thought about using this gas tank right here because there's nothing behind it now because you know there's no gas tank obviously. But we could always use this for our water fill and put our water tank up under there. This thing has so many possibilities. I'm having to write stuff down because I keep thinking of stuff. And if I don't write it down, I'm gonna forget it. And they're really cool ideas. And that's why I want you guys to help me out in the comments because y'all come up with some really cool stuff for that last trailer build we did. All right, so now that you guys got to see what it looked like when I first got it, it is time for me to mock this thing up. And I just wanna throw what I've got on here. Like I said, I've got the Yakima Overhaul HD rack. I've got the rooftop tin. I've got the awning. I'm gonna throw it all on here really quick. I'm not gonna film me doing it, but I want you guys to see kind of what the potential we have with adding stuff, how it's gonna look with the big rooftop tent. The tent will stick off the front a little bit, but I do plan on adding some storage up there. And it'll kind of give you guys a, an idea of what we're gonna be building or, or what it will look like if we add different things to this. That way you can start hitting me up in this comments. I really want you guys to give me your suggestions below. I'm gonna make the list on the whiteboard of the things that we can do, that we can't do, and then we're just gonna start checking that list off. And hopefully within a few weeks, this thing will be ready for us to take up in the mountains and try it out. All right, have I told you guys how much I hate cold weather? <laughs> it is so cold here. I hate being outside when it's cold, but I've got the trailer cleaned up. I pressure washed it. Uh, it's clean as, as good as it's gonna get for now until we paint and you know rebuild this thing. But I've got it kind of mocked up like I said I was gonna do. Now this is not exactly how it's gonna look. I'm still debating on building custom racks so that I can put a, a bed cover on here and still be able to get stuff into the bed. So I wanna walk you guys around it. We're gonna open the tent. I'm gonna open the 270 awning and show it to you. And we're gonna walk around. I want you guys to get your, your brain gears a, a moving so we can figure out some more really cool stuff that we can do to this thing over the next few weeks and turn this into a really cool setup. But before I open it up and walk you guys around, I've got a lot of questions here over the past few weeks about this camera that I use, or really the camera gimbal that I use, and it's called the Hoham MT2 camera gimbal. And I went over it in an older video a few weeks back. If you wanna go look for it there, I kinda talked more about the gimbal, but it's made by a company called Hoham, and I can throw up a symbol like this, and it has AI tracking so that I can walk around and film. And a lot of you guys were really liked how I was able to kinda move the camera around and follow me around my shop without having someone manning the camera behind there. Anyway, this, I don't, the Ho-Hum is a really cool thing for a gimbal if you wanna do some tracking. I'll have it linked below, but I wanna bring them up because they've just released a new product for you guys who like to film with your cell phones or action cameras and stuff. And they've got new wireless mics and these things are awesome. Let me see if I can stop the tracker and walk up here and show you but they've got two different kinds they offer. And they, they both come with a rechargeable case. This is their, like you drop, you charge the case and then you drop your stuff in here. You got two mics with each one and you got your thing that hooks to your cell phone or your action camera. And you can get it in a USB plug. Let's see, this one is the USB plug. Check this out. Or, you, or USB-C, I mean, the small one. And then you got two mics and the mics have little clips on the back and they have these magnets where you can take these little thin magnet strips. And if you wanna stick them, kinda conceal the microphone in your shirt, you can do that. What I like to do is use these clipped on the inside of my pants pocket 
and I run a lavalier mic, like this thing right here that y'all see me use all the time. I run that lavalier mic and you can plug right to this. I like how they come with two different mics so that if you're interviewing somebody, you don't have to take one mic and go back and forth to the other guy. You each can have your own microphone linked to your cell phone that you're filming with or your camera or whatever. So anyway, these were just released in their own Amazon. I'm gonna have these linked below. If I've got a coupon code for these, I'll link them below too. But I thought it was a really cool idea. I love how the, the case, you charge the case and then you drop them in there and the case char recharges your mics and your little device that goes to your, your phone or your camera. Anyway, it's really cool. I think this is the uh, Ho-Hum Mic 01 and it'll be linked below the Amazon link. So, you know, you'll get it really quick, especially if you got the Amazon Prime set up. So now let's get into this walk around. All right, so before I pop the tin out and the awning out and kind of mock it up for you guys out here in the backyard, I want to walk you around it and show you how it turned out after a good pressure wash. Uh, I did find some rust, you know, some more rust. If, if you run those plastic drop-in bed liners, always, if you got a metal bed, you want to check up under there because that's the, it holds water and it'll cause a lot of rust issues. And I did find some rust in the floor, but it doesn't matter. We're going to repair the floor anyway. I'm going to end up rhino lining the floor or bed lining it. And then we're going to build another floor on top of it to, to bolt stuff to and put a drawer system in and stuff like that. But I did find a little bit of rust, but it cleaned up pretty good. There was no major issues that I found after I cleaned it up. Uh, I've got the uh, tail lights coming, the bumper coming already. Everything's just kind of in here. I've strapped it down just to get it back here in the backyard, but this is how I kind of want a good setup where I can drop the tailgate, slide the fridge in and out. This is my ice co fridge. I really want to incorporate this thing into this build somehow. I absolutely love that fridge. I've got just some stuff I threw in here, a little bin box, my ladder for the rooftop tent we're gonna have to use. And that's a gazebo that whenever I build this, I wanna make sure that I can still carry these long items. I don't wanna build too much stuff in this bed that's gonna hinder me being able to put long stuff like that gazebo and stuff in here. So, so one of the things that I thought of that I might do to this thing, see how the fridge, the Iceco fridge, it sticks up above the top of the bed. Well, I'm really considering, I really wanna run a bed cover on this. That way, if I'm on a dusty road, the stuff that's in here doesn't just get caked up and covered with a lot of dirt. But as you can see, a few of the things I got stick up and, and I still don't have the floor. I plan on putting a floor in here too. So that'll be even higher with that. So one of my things that, or one of my thought processes today was, is I could build a platform in front of this uh, truck bed and then have the fridge where it slides out here kind of low, kind of, you know, maybe box it in or whatever. But let me know, let me know what you guys think about that idea or, or what else, you know, you think that I could do with a tongue of this. It's not tongue heavy at all. I can actually pick this up with one hand and walk it around the garage. But, you know, if, if you wanted to do something like this, you don't have to go, I mean, this is campable like it is. I do want to put that out there. Like, you don't have to do all of this extra stuff that we're going to be doing. If you find an old truck bed trailer or you got an old truck that you can convert into a bed and you got a rooftop tin and a cheap ladder rack, that's all you need. I can camp out of this just like it is right now with no issues. All this extra stuff we're gonna be doing is just, it's more, more of a glamping setup, you know. <laughs> it's what we're going for. Here's the other side. And my ladder is gonna be coming up right here. And then the awning's gonna open on the other side. <laughs> Man, that cray fuel tent is absolutely massive on top of this bed. I like it though. I mean, it kind of, it fits perfect. I mean, it looks huge up there when it's popped open, but 
The tent has so much room. I think it's a, the perfect one for this build that we're doing here. Because if you come look at this thing, if you didn't see the review, I've got a video on it. It's the Crayfuel tent. It opens from the side and it offers a ton of room. Look at this. Look how much room is inside this tent. It's got a huge, let me see if I can show you the mattress. The mattress is massive in this thing. And I think it, this is the perfect tent, I think, for the build that we're doing. Hard shell, low profile, and it fits really good. Now the 270 awning, if you just seen me, if I included it in the, the footage there, setting it up, as you can see, it, it kind of tilts down towards the trailer. That's because I'm kind of on a hill, the, the trailer's sitting low, this slopes up, it's hard to tell on camera. But I do still think I need to go higher because I wanna be able to walk with no issues all the way to the bed, you know, up under the awning. I can walk through there right now at certain points, but I kinda wanna be higher. Another thing that we're definitely gonna have to add are stabilizer jacks, and that'll probably come if I fabricate the, the overhead rack, which I think I am gonna do. I can add some uh, stabilizer jacks on all four corners. I don't know if you've seen me, but when I was setting the tent up, I went to climb up the, the ladder and I didn't have the ladder locked. And since this trailer has springs and shocks, it immediately wanted to, to twist on me like that. So we're gonna do that, but I think this thing has got a ton of potential. I'm so thrilled to be working on something really cool like this in the shop with y'all this year. And as you can see, the 270 awning, it is saggy right now. And that's just because I don't have it pulled tight. I couldn't really go all the way around with this corner because my truck was in the way. And this is just kind of a, a rough setup anyway. If I wanted to, to tweak it, I could get it a lot tighter and I could straighten these legs up. Look, that leg's not even straight. I can at least do that right now. But I like these, these legs, they're telescopic so you can move them. And this is the Nature Nest 270 awning. I'll link it in the video description below. I also found that on Amazon. I've got a video on it on my channel if you wanna see more about it. But it's, it's really cool. I think it's gonna offer a lot of shade. All right, so now I gotta get this thing back in the garage and start tearing it down. I've actually got a storm brewing behind me, I just noticed, and the sun's on this side, so I don't know what's fixing to happen, but I'm gonna get this thing back in the shop. I'm gonna strip it down, and over the next two weeks probably, I'm gonna off camera go ahead and undercoat this thing, put in a spray and bed liner, and I wanna get it to a good starting point so that your ideas and my ideas on the build process we can kind of film and, and do together on the channel. So while I'm doing that over the next couple of weeks, you guys that are watching, leave your suggestions, your ideas in the comment section of this video, and I'm gonna be writing everything down on the whiteboard. Like I said, you'll see over the next few weeks in the background of my, my shop videos, y'all's ideas are gonna be popping up on that whiteboard. Anything that I can do, if I can afford to do it and I can physically do it, it'll go on the whiteboard and then we'll go from there and start making the videos and building this thing out. I've got an idea I do wanna mention before I end the video. This spring, I would like to do some sort of I'm thinking either either a subscriber meetup uh, in Gunnersville State Park where we go camping. I'm hoping this is ready by then. That's why I mention it so you guys get to see what we built here on the channel together. If I can make that happen, it may just be a members only trip uh, just to get it started because I've never done it before. Subscriber trip might be a little too big to get out of the gate. It might be just a, just a members only. So if you don't know what a member is, you can click the join button up under any of my videos. And if you click that join button, you become a member of the Yak Squad. It's five bucks a month, guys. And I appreciate all of my members out there. That money goes to me being able to film this content and put it on YouTube. So if you're a longtime subscriber, all the videos that you've, you've watched, I hope you notice they've been getting better and better over the years. I'm trying to make good quality content and that, that little bit of five bucks a month from each of you guys that are members, it goes to getting camera gear, to tripods, to, to anything that helps me make better content is for that money. I dump everything right back into this channel to make better content for you guys. And I hope it shows, because I know when I first started this channel, if you go back, and I don't even like watching them because it's so cringy, but I used to be one of those guys that was filming in my garage and I was yelling at the camera the whole time because I didn't use mics and the audio was horrible. I know when I watch a video, I like the quality to be good. So I'm trying to work on that for you guys and the membership fees that they help, I promise you guys. That gets put right back into this channel and it helps me try to make this content better and better for you guys. So it may be a members only meetup or it may be a subscriber meetup. I'm gonna work the, the details out over the next few weeks and I'll update you guys as I make plans to do it. So if you're close enough, this spring, hopefully, if this is done, we're gonna do a big meet and greet out there, hang out for a day or two, 
go fishing together, cook on the water together. I think it'll be really fun. But anyway, I'm gonna end this video because I might get rained on here in a minute and I gotta get this stuff put back in the garage. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, go to my homepage, check out my other videos. You'll like, if you like this one, I, I know you'll like my other builds. I did those, those few builds that I mentioned at the beginning of this video last year and the year before. Go watch those builds while we prepare to build this thing out. This is gonna be a really fun build. That's gonna do it for this week's video, guys. I appreciate you watching. I will catch you next Monday at six o'clock. Peace.